Now we're going to talk about connective tissue. Um, it is the most abundant type of tissue in the body, uh, connects, anchors, and protects other tissues. And there's four subtypes. We're going to focus mainly on bone, but there's also fibrous tissue, cartilage, and blood as connective tissues. So bone. The function of bone is to support uh, your uh, structure, protect organs such as the skull, protects the brain, the vertebra, protect the spinal cord, etc. It also is a site for muscle attachments and so it helps with movement because it creates levers. Uh, it is a storage for mineral, specifically calcium, phosphorus, and other minerals, and it produces blood cells in the marrow. So bone is made up of, of two main uh, components, your collagen fiber, which you can imagine is like rubber bands. They're flexible, so they resist tensile load. And then this mineral matrix or called hydroxyapatite, which forms crystals and is very stiff. So that can uh, resist compressive loads. So put together, your bone is similar to fiberglass or plexiglass. What are the types of bones? We basically have long bones, which are in your upper and lower limbs, short bones, which can be found in your wrist or in uh, your feet, flat bones, similar to the sternum, scapula, your pelvis, irregular bones, which are your vertebra, and then these things called sesamoid bones. The most famous sesamoid bone is your patella because it increases the moment arm and can increase the torque production of your quadricep muscle or your knee extensor muscles. And we also have architecture of bone tissue and it's separated into two. We have the cortical or compact bone and they are, those terms are used as synonyms. And then we have trabecular, cancellous or spongy bone. Cortical is a thick, dense bone and then the trabecular or cancellus is this um, weave of plates and rods, and it does look like a sponge. So cortical bone, even though if we look at a cross section of the femur, it looks very smooth, it's made up of these, of what we call osteons, which are concentric circles of lamellar bone, which is just very highly organized bone. And these little bone plugs, if you will, are just kind of put together side by side to create this uh, cortical bone surface. It's very dense, much more dense to trabecular bone. As you can see here, it's made up of plates and rods, and it has a lot of holes. That's why people call it spongy bone. And your red bone marrow is made in these spaces. You need to know the parts of the long bone. First, we have the mid shaft of the long bone, which is the diaphysis. That's primarily compact or cortical bone. And then you have the epiphyses, your proximal epiphysis and your distal epiphysis. And those are made up of cancellous or trabecular bone. We have three bone cells. They all start with osteo, which is the the uh, prefix for, for bone. We have the osteoblasts, which are bone formation cells. So they lay down what we call osteoid, and then that osteoid is mineralized and our bone mass increases. We have osteoclasts, which are bone resorption. So those eat away bone, they eat away old and damaged bone. So they'll make little pits in your bone that are then filled in by uh, osteoblasts. And then we also have osteocytes, which are mature osteoblasts, but their main purpose is they're embedded in the bone, so they create a network. And the network can sense changes in loading. So these osteocytes sense if you decide to work out a lot in January, or they can sense if you've decided to sit on the couch. Bone adaptation, uh, it goes from Wolf's Law, as, as many tissues do, and it's basically for every change in, in form or function, there's a definitive change in the internal architecture. So form follows function, or architecture follows function. So if you exercise more and your bone needs to increase its strength, it will adapt. Bone can repair itself, and it can adapt to exercise or loading.
our entire skeleton is replaced every seven years. The mechanostat theory is, is basically an application of Wolf's Law, and it was developed by uh, somebody called Harold Frost. Our bone likes to maintain uh, 2,000 to 2,500 microstrain, and so the mechanostat is kind of like the thermostat. Right? You have a happy th uh, temperature you're at. If, if it drops down and you're cold, you'll turn up the ther thermostat, and if it's too hot, you'll turn it down. So in this yellow happy place, um, there's uh, a matching of bone formation and resorption. You're in an adaptive state, and it, the bone just repairs itself. If you increase your loading, you will, above, say, 3,000 microstrain, you will kick in bone formation, you will increase bone mass, and that is done through a process that's called modeling. And that just means your uh, bone is added to, to specific surfaces in the body. If you go below um, a certain threshold, so say down to like 200 microstrain, you will kick into bone resorption and you will lose bone mass. So on here you can see bone mass, positive bone mass, uh, loss of bone mass. If you increase strain, you'll increase bone mass. If you decrease strain by inactivity, bed rest, uh, paralysis, etc., you will lose bone mass. So what is this remodeling? So there's two processes, remodeling and modeling. Um, remodeling is just keeping the homeostasis of the bone. So if there's a fracture or a micro crack in your bone, um, or it's damaged or old, the osteoclasts will come in here and they have this ruffled border, they seal to the bone, they secrete an acid and it eats the bone away. And then they signal in their osteoblast friends to come into that pit, add the osteoid, their uh, an osteoblast is left behind to create the osteocyte network. And then that osteoid is mineralized and they have successfully repaired the bone. So that's the remodeling process. It's when the osteoclast and the osteoblast work together. We also have the modeling in which the osteoclasts work on one surface of the bone, osteoblasts on another and modeling results in large changes in shape or additions to bone. And so if you start to exercise or, or weight train, you will um, stimulate modeling. So we can have a few adaptations. We can have a positive adaptation where you increase bone mass and thus bone strength, and that results from a stimulation of osteoblasts and a suppression of osteoclasts. Um, and that's all based on the mechanosensitivity of your bone. You can have a negative adaptation, say a stress fracture, where you have an increase in micro cracks and the resorption or the taking away of that damaged bone exceeds formation. And it, the relationship between the osteoblast and osteoclast kind of goes out of whack and that can result in a stress fracture and then go on to a fracture. And now we call them bone stress injuries and it's on a continuum. And there's actually some evidence that stress fractures do not just re result from loading, but there's both a mechanical and a bio biological mechanism.